Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a match between Brackman and One Cut on Intersection. Oh, I'm going to say here. Let's get started. Brackman starting out with light with Shieldbot Factory. Ooh, okay, that's not uncommon in this map. Well, One Cut starting with heavy tanks, appropriate for the map, but definitely not something you see a whole lot. This should be interesting. Normally, this is a light vehicle dominated map, but we are not seeing that. Still, heavy tanks are kind of close, but shields. Shields are played off as well. Shields are not uncommon. Brackman going for a couple couple bandits. Nothing too intense. While one cut actually into a welder for one cut. So both players kind of playing it safe. Going for more of an economic opening. And you see Brackman actually is start, stopping production after his first convict. Using it to assist metal extraction construction. So he wants to have his metal extractors up as quickly as possible. In his tenup, however, I should point out that 15 metal is not being poured in here, only 10, due to the fact that he doesn't have more than 9 metal income and nothing really in storage. Yeah, he's just getting opening up. Well, one cut on the other end takes a bit longer because he is heavy tank, so his units are more expensive. And also, he only has one metal extractor, so one cut starting out behind in his metal, getting very early defenses, and going for energy instead of metal. He really needs to have more metal right now. Energy is not as bottom like he's kind of needs to be even out between the two. So I'd say Brackman right now starting out considerably farther ahead than One Cut is, but this is still fairly early on. One Cut will be able to come in with Kodachi, and that Kodachi is gonna actually, ooh, this this is the only time he has. He has to move in now. Move in, hit the metal extractor, and there it goes. The one second away from the Lotus being done. No, the Lotus is going in the wrong direction. I'm sorry, the Kodachi rather is going in the wrong direction. Lotus can't move, so that was actually a completely nonsensical statement. However, the Kodachi can move and is moving poorly. It is where we're going to get rid of this radar tower, but possibly at the cost of its own life. Nicely getting in a good position to avoid getting hit. Now, if we can move up here, it needs to heal up. Kodachis do heal up automatically, as you can see, right now. Five per, actually, ten per second. Really good self-healing. Well, one cut, he is quickly going to the southwest corner. I like that. I enjoy seeing players do this, because it's a bit of a risk, but you're basically sacrificing defense for map control. It's harder to keep this. But if you can, your economy, especially in this map, is basically doubled. At the same time, one cut is moving back and setting up the metal extractors and wind generators in his base. A little bit risky, getting some panthers up to help defend against this, and Kodachi moving out again. We'll be able to stop this convict, or at least spot the convict, not stop it. We'll deter it. Actually, the convict will move back. The flame is able to make it through the shields, and a rogue, which one cut will have to deal with. You'll have to dodge that, avoiding his fire, and it looks like that... Kodachi is about to move to its death. Brackman's commander over where One Cut is about to go. At the same time, One Cut is in his base. I mean, the thing is, what's nice about this is One Cut is doing some nice soft pressure on Brackman. I mean, Brackman can move out if he wants to, but he doesn't actually realize he can. This Kodachi is keeping him on his toes and keeping him from moving out as much as he would probably like to. Brackman is doing a similar thing to One Cut and trying to go to the northeast, but One Cut has successfully gone to the southwest without really being harassed at all. Thanks to this Kodachi essentially deterring Brackman from getting out. It's He's not actually forcing Brackman into his base. He's not doing any real contain. Just keeping him honest. Keeping him cautious. Well, Brackman moving forward militarily first towards the northeast. Not confident he can just take it with workers, and rightly so. Well, Panthers move in as well. So one cut setting up some nice pressure, especially along the south side. So Brackman cannot easily move south. Trying again with his convict. But one cut will be able to see this, and one cut should point out he is moving up line of sight here. This is just line of sight. And I'll need to find that commander or that constructor first, but at this point his main his main expansion, now getting some solar panels up, setting up a small wall here. Not quite a full wall. It doesn't look like that's what's planned. No, setting up just a small wall with defenders along the side. Not sure if I agree with that. I think it should be probably behind the solar collectors. Still, one cut has taken the southwest. Fairly convincingly. Thanks to this pressure, I mean, really, one cut is doing a lot with only a couple forces. Like, with a Kodachi and two Panthers, he is making Brackman completely nervous. He's keeping Brackman from doing whatever he wants. While one cut, on the other hand, is just getting free reign. He should be taking this southwest side, but I can see why he's building here. However, the welder now should go over to the southwest and take that. However, Brackman now pushing out, figuring he can. And he's not entirely right. These rogues, just outside of the base here, they do... 
Well, they have a range advantage. No, they have a range disadvantage on the defender. Not as much as Rocco's do, but they still have a disadvantage. And one cut, setting up more power plants near this metal extractor. No overdrive grid so far. Actually, none of these are near enough for the metal extractor to overdrive it. While Brackman is setting up the northeast, finally getting his economy up, and actually getting a stronger economy thanks to overdriving his main base. One cut didn't end up making all the wind generators in his main base that he'd probably like to. And instead, pushing out banishers right off the bat to get rid of these rogues. And has gotten rid of the rogues thanks to the Panther and Kodachi. Kodachi got rid of one, Panther got rid of another. Brackman can't easily move in. He does have some control of the center of the map. A couple thugs and a felon. This will be difficult for Brack for one cut to deal with at this point. A couple Reapers would be no problem. Like, the Reapers would just tank the entire felon blasts. At that point, it'd be completely vulnerable, would go down. Doesn't look like he's doing that. He's instead focusing heavily on Panthers early on. Does have the Banisher, but the Banisher has like a fifth of the health of a Reaper. And thus, can't be that effective. And Brackman realizing one cut has done the same thing he's done. Set up in the southwest. Brackman set up in the northeast. And Brackman now trying to move into the main base. Brackman, the tables are turned a bit. Brackman trying to do it a bit of contain of his own. And the Banisher is going down. That felon, ooh, actually the felon not quite in range. The Banisher able to kite it just enough that it's able to get rid of the thugs. And that's that's good for it. That It needs to do that. Got rid of both thugs. And now the felon moving back while the Panthers come in to finish it off. No, they don't. No, they are not going to do that. The felon moving back without the Panthers' help. Panthers would not easily be able to deal with the Felon. I mean, the Felon does have a lot of damage it can deal. Very easy to get rid of that. At the same time, Bandits and Thugs coming into the Northeast. The Racketeer getting rid of the Defenders, or at least stopping them from attacking. The other Defender completely out of ammo. Not going to be able to reload in time. And now this Southwest side is very vulnerable. No Lotuses in place. No defenses whatsoever, in fact. And the units are out of range. One cut appears to have overextended, or at least Brackman has taken advantage of that. One cut did not sufficiently consolidate the southwest side of the map, and now he's going to be behind as a result. While Brackman, on the other hand, has very well consolidated the northeast side. There aren't a lot of easy routes. You can, I mean, one cut if you wanted to, you could send Kodachi up to the north and then east from there. But that would be tricky. That would that would work, but it'd be tricky to pull off properly. This one, however, one cut, able to get rid of some of these. And it's not enough, honestly. What is this? Oh, air switch from one cut. Well, that's interesting. Air switch into five ravens. So it looks like he wants to get rid of the northeast or that or that or felons with these ravens. His panthers are getting rid of the thugs fairly effectively, in fact. The racketeers being a small problem, though, but not that big of one. Disarm does not prevent movement, so they can still dodge the thugs. And down goes the racketeer, and actually down goes his metal extractor. So counterattack from one cut. Needs to be fairly powerful, though. In fact, it needs to pretty much take out the entire main base to really make up for the loss of the southwest side. As well as this metal extractor here. One cut is rebuilding the center south metal extractor. While. Brack. Well, first Raven. Well, still being constructed. One cut only has 14 metal. He can't really support two factories at this stage. He'd need at least 25 to support it healthily. At this point, the best, his best bet is to take out as many metal extractors as he can. Take out all the undefended metal extractors, like this one right here. This band is doing a great job. And Thug going down, however, also a good plan. Get rid of these Thugs. It's just kind of tricky to do. And Oh, this Panther... Okay, there we go. It is going for that metal extractor, which is what it needs to do, because there are enough Panthers going after the Thugs. What we have here is fine. The Felon, however, is moving into range, and the Panthers are going to go down. This Panther can move up. It's a little bit tricky, but it could move up into the main base. Be close though, it'd have to be very much on the border. And I don't think one cut's aware of this or confident he can manage to pull this off. So he's not going for that. He does, however, have one Raven up so far. Two well, second under production. And the caretaker up for this factory to try to push it forward. It's still not gonna be that effective. And that felon needed to have two Ravens to take it out. Not one, but two. And unfortunately did not have that. These Panthers really aren't enough on their own to deal with this. And another Panther here with the Felon, with the Lotus, I should say, but didn't go for the Lotus first, went instead for the Metal Extractor. Does kill it, but at the cost of another Panther, and that's more metal that Brackman can take full advantage of. And this one, Brackman has quite a lot of map control. It's soft in both cases, but Brackman does have units with higher fire rates. There's more units going around the map. He has more defenses around the map. I mean, 
One cut now just retaking the southwest, and even then, this could easily be destroyed. Brackman, in fact, is going out to try to do exactly that. Banisher in place to get rid of a few thugs, which is not a bad idea. The splash damage is very useful against shields. I mean, if this was light vehicles, I would definitely recommend levelers. And down goes that felon, thanks to a raven. Second raven pulls in and does the trick. Getting rid of the felons, with more panthers coming in to consolidate the side. However, one cut still a bit behind. Not as much as he was before, but Brackman has a lot of reclaim to work with. I mean, one cut does have that felon, though. That, that felon corpse... Actually, wow. Th yeah, that felon corpse is still there. Not a whole lot of metal there, but there is still a fair amount. 124? Not bad. Big half a raven. He does have two ravens now. He can snipe felons at will. Very important thing to point out. Felons can be sniped at will, and Brackman now losing more radar. In fact, Brackman losing all of his radar. That center radar was his only radar. One cut, on the other hand... He's only got radar in his main base. No, he could probably put radar here or here-ish pretty safely. Not doing so though. Actually, radar here. He needs to put radar up here, like this corner, so he knows exactly what's coming in when stuff comes in. He only has line of sight and that is not enough. Granted, one cut is focusing primarily on getting a bunch of vandals to get rid of these ravens. But the ravens, nice scout job there. We'll be able to snipe out a metal extractor. Gonna go for the northeast one from the looks of it. Probably gonna, once he spots that, Oh, he's not focusing on... Oh, there he is. Okay, he's focused on it. Got rid of the metal extractor. While at the same time, going from the south, and all these vandals will do very little good. Until the raven comes home. Once the raven comes home, then it will be problematic. In fact, the raven's about to die on its homeward route. Yes, it goes down, unfortunately, for one cut. But fortunately, he did get rid of another metal extractor, and in fact, has an economic advantage thanks to that. Wind generators up in his main base, so the overdrive has kicked in about one and a half times. One cut, now he has the 25 metal he needs, and getting a Tremor, interesting choice. I don't know if I agree with that. Tremors are fairly inaccurate, and actually a comment on the replay itself mentioned that Tremors should only be used against Aspises, because they have such a wide shield. Against Felon Thug, it's going to be a bit tricky. It's going to apply pressure, that's for sure, but whether it actually does any meaningful damage is probably, it's pretty unlikely. Also, one cut, as mentioned before, he does have a Panther here, but still, this area is fairly unsafe. There's not a lot of defenses here, not a lot of units here, and one cut overall does not have a very strong army. It's kind of small, it's really dependent on type counter. The fact that he can snipe out felons without really any issue. The Vandals are a small problem, but the Vandals are about to be taken care of. Thanks to these Panthers and the Banisher are going to try to get rid of these Vandals. Vandals are still fairly tough units, so doing this is going to be tricky. But it does pull Brackman's forces away from their intended attack path. And actually pulls the Vandals away too. This is the perfect time these Ravens could move in. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening. One Cut seizes the opportunity to get this felon. Or will he? Looked like he was going to, but he's moving back. No, he's being too timid. He could have taken out the felon. But instead, he opted to stay in the base, which is unfortunate. Instead, using the Tremor. This is kind of what was meant. The Tremor firing in the sky. And as you can see, far too wide to deal any meaningful damage to that ball. It just does not have the accuracy to do that. It will, I mean, like I said, apply some pressure, force the Vandals to be fairly careful. And there we go. Now you see the Ravens coming in for a snipe. And down goes that Felon. There we go. Three Ravens take it out. And unfortunately, one of them does go down, but the other two stay alive. While Brackman in his main base going purely for shields. Spamming out shields as much as possible. And the two players are fairly even, though. Like I said, one cut more vulnerable in the southwest than Brackman is in the northeast. Brackman, thanks to that loss of that Felon, the Banisher is going to have a lot of... He's kind of a, just a field day taking out of these thugs. And bear in mind, a lot of vandals. In fact, a thousand metal of that is vandals, so Brackman and One Cut are far more even for cost than it looks at first glance. However, One Cut's commander, under a decent amount of threat, able to jump away while the Banisher and Panthers do their job. And Tremor once again coming in here will be of some use, but like I said, Tremor's not the most accurate. Still able to get rid of, or at least able to put some pressure, able to push Brackman back. Ooh, very nice Thunderbird shot here. Now, one cut just needs movement with all his forces, including the Banisher. Very much included with the Banisher. The, pa the Panthers not have the fire rate to make this really pu be pulled off. Disarm's only going to last for another four seconds, even then not for all the thugs. Still, the Panthers dealing a fair amount of damage, but that Banisher was absolutely necessary. And unfortunately, not in position. Now the Tremor's moving in. Is there another Thunderbird? No, there is not. The one that was pulled out... Currently, is it even in play? I think it's dead. I think it ended up dying in the process of disarming everything. 
So unfortunately, that was not the most effective disarm. Still kind of useful, and light vehicle factory being built to the southwest. One guy I'd say is still kind of in the back foot. He doesn't have the center. He doesn't have any really well defended positions. He's basically winning, or at least in, in a good position, by way of focusing Brackman's attention on the center east side of the map. Brackman could very easily take the southwest if he split it, split out some forces to do so, but Brackman's not doing that. He's just trying to penetrate this southeast side, break straight into one cut's base. One cut is kind of just aggravating Brackman and getting all of his focus into a position where one cut has actually fairly well defended. Fairly good defenses. It's a fairly well defended position that one cut can just fight from. And of course, once he gets all these forces in here, I mean, the Ravens will just move in here to snipe out the felon. Although, unfortunately, the Tremor did just go down, as well as another, one of the Banishers. Yeah, one cut, able to get rid of a lot of these forces. We'll be able to reclaim them soon after. The Felon just needs to move in and... Sorry, the Ravens need to move in to take out the Felon. While Tremor's taking out the Bandits, despite their inaccuracy, there's enough Bandits in here to be taken out by the Tremor. And like I said, this southwest side is just being left alone because Brackman isn't bothering to focus on it. He's not splitting his forces. He's... Leaving one cut able to just build up whatever he wants, and now one cut can reclaim a fairly large army. Quite a lot of metal here. Yeah, there's about 2,000 metal inside of one cut's base. So one cut has a lot to work with. Unfortunately, losing yet another tremor, which is 1,500 metals. So he's got enough reclaim to work with here to get back that tremor. But honestly, at this point, I'd say reapers, and he is building reapers, which is good. That's what he needs to do. However, Brackman starting to pierce it, and like I said, one. One cut's best chance is the fact that Brackman is not focusing on the southwest. Bra Brackman isn't even aware of the southwest. Or no, he is. He is aware of the southwest, but he doesn't care. He's focused instead on the southeast. He wants to destroy One Cut's main base, wants to just break it. He's getting kind of greedy, and One Cut is taking full advantage of that. Although, even then, it's still kind of tricky. I mean, One Cut, his main base is not really well defended. Brackman could easily tear down with the forces he has coming in here. Brackman actually switched over to gunships. I didn't even point that out. He did switch to gunships. There's a trident in the main base as well as a couple banshees. However, the banisher will be able to do quite a bit of damage to those banshees. That being said, one cut loses commander in his base. No real workers in the base. Well, there's one welder, but that's about it. And the bandit's moving in to finish this off. I don't think Bra Brackman's going to lose from here. One cut doesn't have much of a chance. These bandits... Not taking all that much damage, and more streaming in. So unfortunately for one cut, he wasn't really able to take advantage of the fact that his southwest side was completely unmolested. I should say they. I, I keep saying he. I keep assuming the players are male. I shouldn't do that. One cut is assuming that, or was assuming there, that Brackman wouldn't attack hard enough. But unfortunately for him, Brackman did, and this is going to be game. Brackman taking out one cut's main base, taking out his economy, and... Just streaming in more and more bandits. I mean, one cut had a pretty good chance there earlier on, too. It just... He didn't take the southwest side here. He didn't take the south center when he had the chance. He didn't raid as much as he could have. These ravens... Yeah, I can see why they were rather timid. They didn't want to run into the vandals, but he killed all the vandals. He had the chance to move in with the ravens and harass out all of these metal extractors. And also, not a lot of defenses in here, either static or by units. So one of the tricky parts of playing heavy tanks is that you do have to build static defense when you're playing heavy tanks. It's very difficult, especially until you get to the late game where you have a dozen Reapers going around the map and two dozen Panthers just running around stunning out everything else. Until that point, you need static defenses everywhere. Your units are slow, they're expensive, they're few in number. Your static defenses are the only way you're going to stay alive. Unfortunately, one cut didn't do that. And while the Raven Switch wasn't a terribly bad idea, it didn't work out to its fullest advantage. Going for the harassment really would have done a lot. Once he got rid of the vandals, he had plenty of room to harass. Unfortunately, did not do that. But anyway, hindsight after all. So, one cut. That's the game. Brackman will be taking it. One cut still fighting valiantly. Do respect that, but Brackman does have this game. And in case you're wondering about me being hypocritical for my Akron videos where I say that Catalyte's not surrendering when he's clearly lost, that's because in Akron, there's like a three-minute window between the point where everything's been destroyed and when the game automatically ends. Not so in Zero-K. So I respect this sort of tenacity more so when it's actually obvious where, when you've won or lost. Anyway, that is the game. I'll be giving another one in just a moment. It will be a match between... Oh, darn it.
I'll tap to my desktop. Okay, only a match between Exist and the Sponge. Well, this would be very interesting. Exist being a player who I think is underrated by Elo. He actually does a really good job playing the game, but his Elo is fairly low. And the Sponge, one of, I believe has been top 10, pretty sure top 20 at the moment. So yeah, this works. It'll be on Quicksilver, and it'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned.